So anyway, does that sound all right to you that our Good morning. I'm weary of technology, so I'm doing a little back up. That is so nice. We have one more. My school for you. Thing about Jan, she came down here and got the coffee made and got everything set up, and made it easier. But we don't have anybody doing that now. Well, you used to have coffee here. Well, Jan did that. Jan's gone, so she's still like Easter. Yeah, as far as I know, I don't know if she's here yet. Did Murphy officially turn in his resignation? I don't know. I he said he was. I assume he did, but I don't know that for sure. Would you be the one to turn it into? Well, I think he was turning it into some character. Rusty, do you know? He has not submitted anything. Morning. <coughs> Okay, ready? You guys are up and live. All right, I'll call this workshop to order. Thank you all for coming. Um, uh, the video will be our roll call. Jerry, would you lead us in pledge of allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, in the addition, deletions, corrections to the agenda. None. Do we approve the agenda? Do I hear a motion? I go just. You might look I at only turn out one from his yeah. house. Yeah. Out. This is in a regular meeting. Um, we will current, uh, make note that this is a workshop and not a regular DEA meeting, which would be September 7th. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work this through as a workshop <clears throat> that is being recorded. So therefore, we would need to change the actual topic at the top from special meeting to workshop on the agenda. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The workshop. The reason we're having this workshop is it was said because we have new members that we should <clears throat> revisit our bylaws and our TIF project and how they work. At the last meeting, I asked that everyone read the bylaws. Um, I personally think that they're fine moving forward. Um, it's up to the board. We guess go down the line and ask if you have any concerns. I think there should be any changes. Don, do you want to start that out? Do you think they're all right? I think it's okay the way it is. Yeah. Unless somebody okay. else has something they want. I'm okay. open to suggestions. I don't okay. see anything wrong with it. Al? 
I guess I've lived with them for 21 years. <laughs> uh, and maybe it's just because I've become callous to them. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just that I've worked with them for so long that I've not found any particular things that caused me any heartburn along the way. So I'm content with them where okay. they are. Jared? I'm good. Okay. I think they served the floor also. Oh, pardon? Why were they changed in 2019? What, what was changed? Hmm, good question. Do you remember, Al? I think it was a minor change that we changed them in 2019. Was it a minor wording thing, or I don't really remember. If you, if you I read... know it wasn't major. If you look at the, the documents, the previous, and then what was approved in the resolution, approving the, the new bylaw, mm -hmm. they made it from a, um, a nine member board to a range of five to 11. That was okay, the that that was is the change. change. Okay, yeah. so that's the only thing I noted as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's the only one that I've got too. Yes. Okay. Is that occurred uh, by ordinance number 1113 series 09? Okay. Yeah. So, is that good for you, Arden, Abby, and Tony? Do you have any? Do they look to serve as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, moving on. Now, again, do um, all of you understand how the TIF works? I think you do. John, and I think you do now too, don't you? Yeah, okay. I'm catching up on it. Yeah. Yep. So we we addressed that and told him that so. Okay. Um, then I guess what I'd like to talk about today is do you all understand what the board voted on as our three-legged project to move forward on the station? Can you Recall what we presented at the city council meeting. And I'd like to talk about those today. Al was handling the uh, listing the property for sale, um, the pros and cons, the developing of the property. We had decided as a board that we were not developers and did not want to venture into that. that uh, Realm. So, Al, tell us this new board what you found and what your assessment was on. Sure. Let me kind of put a whole bunch of stuff that I've accumulated over the years together and set it aside because it's not applicable at this moment. One of the prongs that I worked with uh, for quite some time now, and this has been my thought processes for a large number of months. Uh, I was directed by the board at one point to see if we could still find a master developer. Uh, and I have talked with local real estate agents that predominantly work within the confines of Teller County, the things that are necessary to be sold and bought in Teller County. Uh, also worked with uh, one firm in Colorado Springs and talked with representatives from one commercial developer out of Denver. Without exception, those professionals thought that this particular piece of property, though it is unique, it is in the center of town, but it is too small for them to address a lot of the development issues and then try to spread all of those costs over such a small parcel of land. Therefore, it was uneconomical to do. Therefore, uh, I uh, then pushed uh, a little bit harder on 
the DDA board sort of act as a developer, but only in a supervisory role. That role would be to select a individual who is uniquely talented that could actually move this project forward to the point where we would have parcels to some degree defined that an individual entrepreneur of uh, whatever size they happen to be would be able to buy a parcel of land and then use that for their entrepreneurial pursuit without them having to go through all of the various issues that are necessary in the development. That would have been done. Uh, my proposal was that this individual, and I'm going to use the word that it may be inappropriate, but I'm going to call them a planner. They're not really the developer, but they're the planner that goes through, works with the various regulatory boards to figure out where the bumps in the road are, smooth them out, and move forward. So that person would uh, work with the Woodland Park planning department, uh, work with and develop architectural and design recommendations, because we do have an overlay district in that area that may or may not be a valuable thing that we want in this market. And that's the big key when I say market, because we have not really been market driven. We've been fantasy driven for 21 years. So we need to get to market driven. This planner would need to work with fire department, utility departments, electrical telecommunications, do a variety of engineering studies, such as drainage studies, streets, parking, surveying, traffic studies, and a great deal of financial work to figure out who is going to be paying for what. Uh, my proposal was that we only define the perimeters on those parcels of ground. And I look at it as three separate parcels of ground in Woodland Station. Uh, if somebody told me that, well, I could see four in there. Yeah, I could accept that too, because each of those parcels have different uses and different values. Some are very high, some are perhaps very marginal. Uh, and then just stake out and define those property corners. Once we know the shot size and shape of those parcels, then when an entrepreneur comes in and says, I need a given number of square feet for my project, here's where I would like it. Then that uh, entrepreneur could put in the interior law line and he would then basically be ready to go because a lot of these questions would already be defined. And he would not have to try to define all of them for the entire structure if they only wanted a small parcel of land. So we would be a subdivider to a degree, but only on the perimeter of those three or four parcels of land. Then we could negotiate and potentially work with adjacent property owners to see how that given parcel of land would fit into their thoughts on how they would like to develop their land. Rather than, you know, we've been dancing this now for a long, long time. Uh, entering into our third year of fantasy is not a market driven philosophy. Is that kind of in a thumbnail give you an idea as to where we're at or where I'm at on that? Well, first off, I, I totally disagree with this partial and, and I totally disagree that one person would be represented. And I totally disagree. I totally disagree that um, we would do anything that would benefit a uh, neighboring property owner that happens to be sitting on the DDA board. 
that is a total sham. It's a conflict of interest. And if you think that I'm going to go along with that, you're, the whole thing is, uh, it should, we're not developers. We should be developing the, the whole unit, whatever comes along. But if anybody is sitting on this board thinks that they, they're going to profit off of it uh, because they're on this board, they should resign right now. That's my two cents. Okay. Any more comments? Yeah, I'd like you to explain that a little more. You've had this conflict of interest thing for a few meetings. So, so let's give you a, an opportunity to explain why this is a conflict of interest for me to be on this board. Well, you plan to profit. I plan to profit. Yes. And you can prove that. Arden, I'm not getting into all that. Okay. Okay. All right. We're, we're moving forward with that. That's okay. Well, Tony. Okay, so um, we are in a discussion work session. So uh -huh. hopefully the goal yeah. is to get out yeah. ideas. So um, what I would say is I think, um, I definitely understand where Mr. Bourne is coming from with respect to, and he used the term market. What I would say is that now don't, and I agree with Jerry on one respect with respect to it, it can't be one person. And, and what I mean by that is, um, uh, we as a board, and now that we're on the board, we're actually responsible for all the previous board's actions as well. So uh, keeping that in contact. So uh, I do believe in the free market, and I believe that even thinking about finding one planner person, even thinking about that there's three parcels, and I don't necessarily disagree with Mr. Bourne if I think of it from a developer's perspective with my limited developer experience. Um, but what I would say is uh, the best thing this board could do, and um, I think it has been delusional for since 2001, uh, and then since we've owned the property, I think in 2009, that we were smart enough up here to determine what the market will bear. What I would argue is that we put our efforts into just one thing, and that is uh, that notebook, all the information that we have in the uh, 6,400 files that we have on record, uh, all the information that we have from the city, Mr. Allspock, um, we put together a document, a very detailed document of the good, the bad, the ugly of the property, uh, we publish that to the ecosystem, the world, and wait for the market. Whether it's one year or 20 years, I don't care. The reality of it is only the market can solve this, and only the market and a developer with a checkbook knows when that inflection point is. For us to even try to guess at it is delusional. For us to even guess at how they would want to break up the parcels is not, I mean, uh, very easy to do. So I think that's all we can do, frankly. I think it makes our job easier. We wait for the market. And, and what I will say is, Mary Jo, you and I were at a luncheon with the city and a, a very successful developer in the Springs, if you recall. And that developer basically said, you couldn't give me the property. And I will say that I brought up two additional super successful developers from the Springs uh, one that may be doing most of the downtown redevelopment off Tejon. And both of them, because I knew them personally, one from the uh, serving on the Boy Scout board in the Springs, um, uh, two from doing business with, and both of them said the same thing. We couldn't give them the property. And so what I will suggest is let's put all of our efforts into assembling this electronic document with everything we know to the best of our ability and publish it and wait, um, period. And yes, it means that at some point when the DDA goes away and the property hasn't been sold or we hit the, I guess the magical 2023 date, the property goes back to the city, but they would be in the same quandary. That, I'm sorry, the council's, the council's not that smart either. None of us are that smart to figure it out. And so we have to wait for the free market to solve it, whoever it may be. And frankly, I haven't run across anyone uh, with the checkbook or the vision to actually make it work. 
Uh, I met with Mr. Williams, one of the parties we've been talking to for a couple of years before he even came to the DDA with his ideas. I uh, met with the Tava Development Group a year before they approached the DDA. So, and typically, um, you know, you have to have someone that has the checkbook to make it work. Uh, and um, if something is ever done on that property that's positive, Will it increase the value of adjacent properties and the properties across the street? Absolutely. That is free market, that is reality. So um, you know, there is no conflict of interest there. Um, conflict of interest, if we, uh, it's been talked about quite a bit at city council. Um, if we ever get to that juncture, I expect anyone on this board to step up and recuse themselves in a conflict of interest perspective. But with regards to the property, let's put together that document. Uh, last meeting, Tanner came up and said he knows more than anyone about the property, maybe. Um, let's get everyone from Mr. Coy to everyone up here to the city involved in assembling it and then wait, period. Okay, well, I've got along those lines, assembling this document, Al, you mentioned the realtors you talked to, the issues were so great that they couldn't spread them across a small property. So obviously those issues were communicated to the realtor in some way, shape or form. Uh, so could you just give me a, like a nutshell, what you would have told the, the realtor, like here's the issues we're dealing with here. That, okay. Probably uh, we might start with, there's a great deal of engineering that needs to be done on that particular piece of property. Uh, defining what the floodplain is and developing a floodplain map yeah. and coming up, up with the appropriate ways of handling the, uh, the water that drains not only off that property, but also that normally drains through there. We have to work with the Corps of Army engineers, you know, uh, relative to the drainage that goes through there at this particular point in time. We need to worry about surveying to define exactly where our property lies. Uh, I remember many years ago, there was a survey of that property that was done and there is encroachment on the south end I don't know how extensive that encroachment is, but that will need to be addressed uh, to define where that encroachment is and how we might be able to solve that. Uh, we'll need to work with and define what type of uh, improvements are gonna be necessary relative to the fire department uh, what are we going to need for water, sewer, gas, uh, telecommunications, all of that infrastructure there? We need to be aware of and uh, reflect back on the benzene plume that does come through that property, whether it has expanded over the years or if it is mitigating. Now, we do not have any uh, requirement from the state that requires us to do anything but it needs to be addressed if you're gonna start building in that area. There was a time, and I don't know if it is still current or not, but uh, they were not able to put living accommodations on the first floor of any building. You could put them on the second floor and that was okay. And you still needed to uh, install at the time of construction and foundation, a vapor barrier underneath. Uh, again, I don't know where that lies in that particular process. It needs to be defined. CDOT and traffic studies, again, needs to be updated. We've got uh, a lot of stuff from CDOT in the past. How current is that and what is going to be the impact on that particular piece of property at this time? Also, traffic flow within the parcel itself needs to be reviewed and, and try to figure out what is going to be the best, not only for that particular piece of property, but so as not to impact adjacent piece of property so that we have a good traffic flow. <clears throat> uh, 
at this point, I think that's about, or basically a, uh, an overview of us and what needs to be done. There's a fairly large amount of stuff that needs to be addressed. It's gonna take time. Yeah. Pardon, does that answer your question? Well, a little bit. A, a lot of the things you mentioned would happen on any property anywhere. You have oh, to sure. deal with drainage, survey, traffic. Uh, the one benzene, that's special to the property, but didn't slow the hardware store up, the vapor barrier. I'm not sure where that first floor residential, if that was a choice or somebody mandated that. So did that come from the state? That's what my recollection is. Well, we'd have to find that and, and yeah, that needs demonstrate to be defined. that. Yeah. Because my other understanding is some of the past plans included underground Fountain Creek, you know, a very expensive infrastructure project that was a choice. You don't have to underground the creek, but you know, so that's been, you know, just takes on an urban myth thing that you have to do $3 million of earth moving there just to do anything. Well, that's not really true. We've also had uh, developers come to us and be told they'd have to build a traffic light uh, at the corner of Center Street. And that's not necessarily true until you do the, the CDOT thing. So just figuring out exactly what the starting point is for the next person to walk through the door that they don't get immediately discouraged. Trustee had his hand up next to me. Yeah, uh, what I, I want to go back to is uh, Jerry, your explanation of a conflict of interest that you'd be uncomfortable with regarding an adjacent property owner. We just, in the, the subject prior to moving to the property, talked about the bylaws. And we all said we read the bylaws, we all agree, no changes. So I would refer to the definition of conflict of interest, Article um, 4, that tells us what the, the conflict of interest that would force somebody to recuse. And there's a very important sentence here, and I'll read it to you. Um, this is talking about when somebody on the board you now would pertain to an employee if there was somebody hired. It, it does say employees or board members. There, there would always have to be a recusal on a vote when a member would receive a benefit or incur a cost substantially greater than other property owners in the Woodland Park DDA. So it doesn't say it's not limited to it has to be an adjacent because by definition with the CDOT boundary, even across the street is considered adjacent. There's no separation recognized by a street. So it, it, it's gonna be situational. Mary Jo, you're technically adjacent. Um, John, yours is adjacent. Um, let's see, well, Murph's is, is adjacent. You can't just say adjacent. It, it rules somebody out from um, being able to vote. If there's a conflict of interest, which means they're going to get substantially greater benefit. Now, most people would deduce, well, it's actually substantially greater or substantially um, a loss. So anybody that anywhere in the DDA that would incur substantially greater or substantially less from an action is what would force a, a recusal for conflict of interest, not just the mere fact that they're adjacent to it. Okay. So Rusty, okay. you're, you're saying that it's okay for to be on this board so that you can profit. Do you have somebody that's taken us to uh, file a lawsuit against us? You got somebody that has demonstrated for years that they want that and have retaliated and constantly. Are you saying personally, that you think it's okay for somebody to be on the DDA board to profit? Jerry, I'm saying by definition, every business person on the DDA has a legal obligation to enhance the, the values of the properties in the DDA. It's businesses taking care of businesses. So I'm telling you on the record, if somebody, brings something forward that anyone on the board or any other business in the DDA profits, 
you're accomplishing the mission of the DDA. So yes, there should be a, an incentive to help everybody profit, but it can't be an, an individual substantially greater. And that's the key, substantially greater than anybody else in the DDA. If one person is way out of line, that's wrong. But if everybody goes up, that's your mission. No. Okay. That's by the, well, the words we'll, in the, we'll in the article. It as, it, as it comes along. I appreciate your comments, Terry, and it will be considered as it, as it progresses. Should that happen, it will be dealt with. Okay. Yeah, I want to get back to Woodland Station and kind of button that up from my perspective. Um, Mr. Well, Board. This is one part of it. So go ahead. Well, there's there's three parts to what we're going to talk about on Woodland Station. Well, I'm making the argument that all three of those should be abandoned and we should have one stance. So Mr. Bourne's exactly right. Uh, he gave off a pretty comprehensive list of kind of the entitlement processes that developers go through. And he's been there, he's developed. Um, and uh, whether we have a developer coming in with a checkbook or whether they're getting a loan, those are all the issues and entitlements that they would have to walk through the process. So of the entire list, the only thing that I would advocate for the DDA board spending money on, and I think it's appropriate, is establishing the clear boundary and legal description of the property itself, because you can't sell it unless you have it defined. Uh, you can't, you know, even if a developer came tomorrow, tomorrow, the first step would be the survey to define it, get the proper legal description so the title can be conveyed. So that's the only thing that I think we should put our effort into with respect to expenditures, because frankly, the developers should bear the cost of the rest of that. Right. Yeah, so. Okay, Al. Yeah, um, that might reflect a little bit more in detail on Mr. Weatherford's comment on the, uh, the drainage ditch that's there. Is that yes, uh, underground uh, culvert has been certainly talked about to put in a box cover that. But as I recall, the temperature of the Corps of Army Engineers was not to do much of anything when um, the city was looking at that as a possible location for the swimming pool, because it was actually brought forward at that time that they put a box culvert and put it underground. But uh, at that time, they were not interested in doing anything. So that, and I don't know what the temperature is today. Maybe it's changed. I don't know. Just well, that questions needs, that you have to work yeah, through. That needs to be addressed because I do know that it's a different staff at CDOT today yeah. than it was. When no, not CDOT. That's Army Corps of Army Engineers. Engineers. Yeah. So, changed. so it and depends it, it upon it their temperature. The headwaters of Fountain Creek in that statement in itself. It's a watershed. To come. It's not the headwaters. There's no water there. It's not feeding. It's just well, a, I know. a watershed. Said, but I they agree with that. It's technically it's over close way to It's a watershed. It's not headwaters. Yeah. It flows into Fountain Creek from the when it rains, when it storms, but it's not a headwater. If it was headwater, there'd be water there now. Yeah. Well, that's what we said too. Yeah, but and that's they why. Said. I, that's why I call it a green dish. Yes. yes. But uh, that's not their. Well, that wasn't their temperature earlier. What it is today, I don't know. But earlier, and I agree. Well, with that would be part yeah. of the okay. Moving on, the second part is there any more questions on that? We'll move on to the second part. That was Mike Williams, he was the only active developer we had to have at the time, and I'm not sure whether he is still in that capacity at this time. So, that part of the leg is up in the air. So we can move on from that. I have no idea. He said that he has investors. He said that he was putting together something he would like to present it to the to the DDA board, but he is not there yet. And I don't believe Sally King has brought anything forward to the DDA. So we're moving on from that. Then the third part that we had voted on and to move forward with, so we need to address this 
was this plan of 2016. I only have three copies of this. There's copies floating around. Did you guys have a copy of this back there? Or do you need to go to? And do you guys have one? John, do you have one? I have one, not with me, but I have one. Okay. So this is just a plan laid out um, at the time. And I do know that everyone that was present at that meeting, including city, community, board, Everyone in the room voted that this was definitely a desirable plan and to move forward with it. But they would like to see us move forward with it. Well, that has hit roadblocks all along the way, and we have it. So this was done in conjunction um, with the lay of the land, what was there with the least amount of money spent, it would be a community. project and it has all kinds of ideas what would fit there what we could do this big round circle was a circus tent or circuses all of these other were parking spots how the parking would work how the traffic would flow how the pedestrians would flow the walkways that kind of thing so this is something that was voted on and we need to Probably think about choosing what to move on. No, you're good. Um, so, no, I think, um, as a matter of fact, I think I was in Mr. Coy's uh, place of business when he showed me the original renderings on his uh, really cool computer software. Um, so I guess here's the question for the DDA board. So I think we have approximately 28 parks in Woodland Park proper that are designated as parks. Um, again, on Woodland Station, if, if our desire is to wait for the marketplace and hold for the developer, whether it's one year or 20 years, uh, then other than doing what um, Mr. Gamelke and Mr. Zulaga did a few weeks ago and, and keep it knocked down and looking presentable. I don't know that we should put much money into creating yet another park unless that's what it's truly gonna be. Now, we've already, as a community, spent more money on Woodland Station than its current book value. When we consider uh, the breach of contract lawsuit that we lost, when we consider uh, the engineering monies put into Matrix and other entities, uh, I think the book value right now is at 1.2 million. We've already exceeded that just in monies that have uh, given us no return. So uh, I'm not averse to turning it into yet another park and doing it properly. I would argue that Memorial Park is pretty dang awesome um, and can accommodate most things we need in our community. Um, I'm not averse to it being temporary parking for different events. Um, again, as we learned, uh, the board should have learned previous. Uh, as a board, we actually do have some protections uh, through the city because of the nature of being associated with the city. So I'm less concerned about risk factors there. But um, again, if we're going to wait for the free market to solve it, Let's wait for the, let's define the boundaries so we can actually sell it when someone comes, because um, that's an expense that has to happen anyway. Um, if we want to uh, explore it being a park, then let's do that. I don't think it could be both, because I think otherwise it's a waste of funds. Are you put your phone in? As is, it looks very low rent, podunky, like we're trying to have a park, but it's not really a park. I would agree with Tony that if we decided, Memorial Park has been wonderful. So the money spent there has not been wasted. So if we want another park, it ought to be done correctly. Figure out how to fund it and just do it. So I understand that there's two competing notions here to develop it or turn it into a park. I could go either way. I'm just tired of the subterfuge of pretending to make a park while we're pretending to look for developers. Well, so far, we haven't made it anything. 
little like you get the grass cut and get tons of fruits for that. So like people fuss at us every time we want to spend money on it. So. But there, Gary. Well, um, I agree with Tony on the free market uh, dictating what's happening. And I actually believe that that's what you're doing is um, what you're suggesting is what we've been trying to do for quite some time. And that is take a, a situation, let the, the free market determine what happens over there and take and make it useful for a public good in the meantime. Now, I don't think anybody's uh, ever suggested spending big bucks to do that. Uh, it's just to, to keep it in a, uh, a public use. Uh, until it, it's developed, yeah. until somebody wants to put them in. Uh, so, um, yeah, we, we just need to just let the free market decide. And I think that that's what we've been doing all along. I don't think it's a new revelation. No. And I would say that this could fit into the free market. I mean, right now, we had a hot air balloon over there during the 4th of July because there was no place else to put it. They couldn't do it anywhere else. And it was great. People commented on it. And enjoy it. I mean, I think it's until someone comes along that really can. And the properties around it, when they get developed, that should increase the possibility of redevelopment. But until then, the community can use this and bring events to town, concerts, like the bike rallies coming, it could be used if there wasn't so much controversy there. And if it was at least leveled, at least somewhat accessible, it could be used while we're waiting. And that's really what this program was designed for. Question? Yeah, I, you know me, I do a lot of research. When I got the plan, uh, the Woodland Station Land Improvement Use and Management Plan, um, the thing that struck me was the premise statement so, which, which says no commercial or new commercial real estate development is not currently viable in downtown Woodland Park. That's the premise. I'm not sure I agree with that premise. So I tried to find who put this study and plan together. There is no certification, there's no credentials, there's no names on who put this plan together. So I have no idea what the, the qualifications are of rendering the premise and the plan. Do, does anybody have a, a documentation as to who created this plan? It's not signed. So we're working on a plan that we don't even know where, where or who. Put that together? I don't remember for sure. It was Which one of the, of the 24 no, proposals. We've had a number. Matrix, matrix is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it can't be Matrix. Well, I would have think they would have put their name on it if it was, but it would go that back that far. But what's happened in the past obviously did not work. It's null and void. Here we are today. How do we move forward? Again, it's a new day. What do we want to do? Can we can we do something with the property so that the community can use it until development comes, until other properties are developed? John? Have we ever talked about, uh, I know they have groups that get together and they make trails in open spaces. Mm -hmm. Have we talked about maybe just putting some trails in there where people can hike and walk and walk, I, I don't know, just something that put and, people there and that's possibly. Kind of what this was about. Not to this, this has got parking lots, this has got all. I'm talking about just yeah, some trails, just that people can walk. You know, they can get out of their car, they can walk half mile they can walk two thirds of a mile whatever just to because when we were over there mowing i did see people getting out of their cars and using the restrooms and i did see them walking around a little bit i didn't see them going across the street and spending any money i saw them getting back in their cars and leaving but it might be a way to draw people over there where they say at least then when people go by they see people walking and hiking it's just an idea 
And I know that they have volunteers that do that. I don't know if they'd be interested in something like that or not. Because then I know that we probably, if we get people around this drainage area, we don't do something to protect them from going over the edge. You can't have vehicles down there unless you put some type of barrier. Because I could just imagine cars being at the bottom of that, going over, you know, whether they're drinking or, or whatever. I, but if walking, I think you could probably put up some proper barriers in the right spots that would guide people away from that. It was just a suggestion. And that's kind of what we were trying to do when we went out, and I'd like to have an update on our, our wood chips, that kind of thing. Uh, we talked about leveling it out, putting wood chips so people can, can walk, can park, and then using some of the wood chips to make trails that on there. I can tell you that I don't want to walk on wood chips, I'd rather walk on the dirt. I schedule that for general discussion. You want it now? Uh, yeah, let's do it now. Do it now. Okay. In the earlier part of the summer, um, I guess the board really wanted to do something to improve the parking uh, down on that particular piece of property, and particularly that area that is immediately south of the Woodland Hardware. Mm -hmm. So I worked with a local business um, and that individual was willing to come into that area down on, that we talked about, level it out and bring in uh, wood chips to uh, help define a parking area. I worked with them, we laid out the area and he was ready to go the next day after our, our final meeting. Then I got a call uh, directing me to stop because uh, it was approved at that time for the bike rally to use that as a parking. And the city was gonna come in and do some grading and bring in some of the, uh, the grindings from asphalt. Mm -hmm. But yet I was directed to put the wood chips on the property and that's where it was dumped and currently sets. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went by the property here this yesterday evening, I see nothing has been done to prepare that for the, uh, the parking activity that's going to occur this weekend. No, and I, I think that that was because of off limits just because it's so controversial. However, I did find out to follow through with that, that they do plan to park the vendors vehicles over there. Okay. And that yeah. would be it. And if other people park there, that's fine, but the vendors would use it for parking, just that's all. Earlier this year, we had a local business man step up willing to grade it and put the chips down and distribute them at no cost. But we lost it at this point. So I Just guess- indecision, and this is, I and know, here's and where my so soapbox is. I've lived with that for a large number of years and it frustrates me yes. that we, we get a direction and then something happens and we go up and blow it up. Get somewhere and then blow it up. And, and I'm getting on my salt soapbox now at this point. But it's true. Yeah. And hopefully we can fix that. Yeah, we can sell that property, but we can't do it in the current uh, mode of operation. Well, we've proven that over the last 20 years. Absolutely. So we got to do something. Yep. Um, we can't just sit there or it's going to be an albatross to the city. And then we'll yep. end up with storage units and low income housing. That's not what downtown, that last piece should be. Those little towns all over the country would die to have that size of property in the middle of their town to bring in tourists and um, economy and monies for activities. So we need to be careful in what we do with it. Um, any more comments on that? Do we want to? Al, would you be willing to contact him? Because it's not going anywhere with the city and as long as the bike rally. Would you be willing to contact him and see if he would be willing to well, step up like what he did before? Or we can we see. Shot ourselves in the foot. What are we going to do with the uh, desired 
wood chips that are elsewhere on the lot that was, I was told that they would be moved at the time that um, the parking was developed for the bike rally. So well, we've got an extra issue now that we didn't have before. Well, <clears throat> let me just kind of represent the city council. It, the, the bike riot rally and coordination for that is under the city manager's control, not the DDA's control. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sally. You're, you're yeah, the city yeah. liaison. Okay. So wouldn't we be talking to the city manager on what is necessary to do with the wood chips? No. Why would we not? Oh, our, okay, but, but Al's discussion is all around the wood chips in, in time for the bike rally. Correct? It's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Bike, not okay. going to happen. So, the bike rally's out of it. So we're back to what are we going to do? Are we going to pursue that to level that out? We had talked about the wood chips are not desirable, but they're free. And at some point when we can do something better upgraded, that wood chip would be mulch and it would be... Uh, well, as a drainage concern, and, and again, I would turn to the city staff for That's recommendation. Not a area. I mean, the, the, the wood chips that would be worked through Sally and through the city department. Hear me out. Care Hear me out. Wood chips float, and they float downhill. Right. Yeah. We have major area. drainage for the city's infrastructure at the south end area. Those wood chips, if I know my physics properly, those wood chips are gonna end up clogging up the city's no. infrastructure. No. Have we rent, had a, an opinion? We talked about that and we talked about it down there that there are things you can put to catch that and it would be done through the city and with the, the direction of that department road to Okay, well, Mary Jo, this is a workshop, and I'm watching this, the planning director shaking her head no. So okay, maybe we could good. ask, since it's a workshop. Uh, here, do you want to use my Let microphone? Use this one. Yeah. So. The staff does have concerns about wood chips floating primarily into the Woodland Station detention pond. So it would be an issue for the property owner, the DDA, to keep the detention pond from clogging up. So you will, I would predict, wood chips float, they will easily move into the drainage and the detention pond, and then you're in a situation where you have to hire somebody to re, um, remove those wood chips. And I guess being a fiscal okay. conservative, that's my concern. Okay. What looks uh, like it, Mary Jo, this is a workshop. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking. So while it appears to be free, Al, I, I would think long-term, we would want to think about the cost that might be incurred later on. Thank you. At the time, oh, excuse me. Go ahead, Ms. Warren. At, at the time that we're putting this project together, that particular uh, risk was identified. It was. And um, I was making arrangements to bring in some sedimentation uh, blankets so as to uh, help retain that. Yeah. Because, yes, we recognized that. And it was hoped that for the life of the retention, of whatever that device that we were gonna be putting into, whether it's the round you know, ropes or some other type of uh, retaining device versus the length of the uh, wood chips in there and being actually uh, driven over, walked on, rained on, snowed on, which tend to help stabilize them. So it was a, a time interval that probably we would have been successful on. Uh, we do have a lot of dirt drainage into that detention pond. Uh, it's a point sometime in the not too distant future that that'll have to be dug out again. So yes, drainage is an issue. And to a degree it was being addressed. 
but it's a valid point. Thank you. So uh, again, in sticking with my theme, I'm gonna suggest uh, none of us have a crystal ball. And so even to try to predict what events me, what we might want to help facilitate on the property and what is the proper materials to put down for those events it is almost impossible. So I think in trying to do good stuff and free isn't free usually and trying to do good stuff uh, I think I think we put barriers in front of ourselves for instance if there's an event and let's say it was the motorcycles uh, and they needed overflow parking then it's overflow parking as is and each individual adult whether they're a motorcycle rider or automobile has the right to decide to park there or not but for us to decide what kind of material is appropriate for a motorcycle rider versus whoever just doesn't fly. And so I think uh, somehow I think we have to get rid of that mulch, in my opinion, before it does become more of an issue, period. Okay, so is there a consensus then that we scrap the wood chip project and now- That we scrap it, yeah, for now. Is that what we're determining here? Okay. And Mary Jo, just so uh, we, uh, yeah. tying in, to, because the city staff is preparing the budget, it, has there been a line item request for funds in preparation for dredging the drainage pond? Has anybody spoken to the city staff about adding that line item for their budget for you? We haven't, no. Okay, I, I might suggest that we reach out and let the, the city manager know that there might be a requirement to dredge that drainage pond. So as a liaison, could you pass that message? I, I shall, thank you. Mary, Mary Jo, yes. correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that's a city responsibility to dredge that. It would be a DDA responsibility and it should be in our line item. Correct. It'll be in the DDA's line item, but the city uh, council appropriates funds for whatever projects you need. So if you need money to dredge that pond, it needs to be identified in that. In the in the DDA in the budget. DDA budget. Correct. Yes. Yes. Not the city's general fund. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Then you can call him and tell him not to bring any more wood chips. Yeah. No, I shut that down when I okay, got that, so we're, we don't have to that indication down. that uh, the city was going to grade it and bring in the, the grindings. Okay. But that didn't happen. Yeah. Okay, so we need to move on. I will do a consensus that this is that this leg of the project is on hold, or do we want to uh, reconsider some uses down the road? Tony? So I think in our discussions, we've, we've kind of identified potentially two courses of action. And what I would propose is versus a consensus, I will be back in a few weeks and give us time to contemplate it and come back and have some kind of motion as to which direction we want to move forward with. And we'll have to do that in the next Yeah. Meeting. So I don't think we need a consensus today. Right. Yeah. Is that good with everyone? Then we'll, we'll discuss this whether we go on with this at the next regular September 17th. Okay. Um, we have, I've invited, and I, I'm sorry, who were you? Rebecca Allen. You're Rebecca. Okay. Oh. Rebecca is here. I've invited all three of our applicants to come today to see what goes on and if they want to participate. And, we would do interviews um, on September 17th. And after this meeting's over, Rebecca, if you'd like to talk to any of the board or ask any questions, you're welcome to. You know, accommodate her. That would maybe help us at our September Thank meeting. you for coming. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, we have talked, we don't need to talk a lot about this because we will address it at our September meeting, but you've had the resumes of our three applicants. Um, if you have any questions or any comments on that, um, we can, we can at least, 
converse about it a little bit. If you wanted to save your questions for next meeting, that's okay too. So after the last meeting, do we want to collate our questions and run them by the city HR and then be co consistent and professional in how we approach it, the interview process? I think it should be the same questions. And if they all come, uh, we would ask the, uh, the applicants to wait in the other room and do one at a time, but I think the questions would be the same. So if you have a question you want to ask. I, I don't think that's what he's asking. I think oh. from somebody that's, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody that's as black and white as I am, mm -hmm. I may ask an inappropriate question not knowing today's, because I'm just blah. And apparently that's not very PC, and PC I'm not. So I think that we, Tony's idea is protecting ourselves so we're not asking inappropriate questions. We need to, it, today in today's world with HR, all that, there's there's just a lot of stuff that we have to be responsible for. Yeah, and, it, and it's less about protection and more about best practice and professionalism and setting a new tone and how we move forward. So I guess what I would suggest is um, that we, each of us can submit some questions. Uh, we get them put into a document that we have HR review by the city to have them sanctioned and then we'll have the questions in front of us and then uh, Mary Jo you could direct whether any or all of us ask the questions or you ask the questions it doesn't matter and then we do it in a consistent manner that's yeah so you're exactly right you read me right John. I think that's good um, my only question is um, I think that we should come up with our own questions I agree with mm -hmm. all that you said except I'm not sure about running it past the city do we need to do that uh, again, uh, what John's referring to is to make sure that we're not asking them inappropriate HR questions. I got you. I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> the, I, a lot. For that reason, I think that, that, would, be, that yeah. would I think that would be a good thing. So um, let me ask this. Tony, can we ask you, would you put together, if all of the board would call Tony with questions, would you put those questions together? I, I would be happy to call you, and I can, I can, John and I can report on the project you gave us last time, and then um, I have some internal controls processes, things I would like to discuss in this forum. Okay. So whenever, whenever appropriate. So yes, I'd be happy to okay. if you pull that do document that together. If you want to work with John to do that, to put those questions together, all of us will uh, contact you. We have your phone number, your email. Well, that's that's one of the things I'd like to discuss. We shouldn't be communicating okay. through private email. No, we should do it through the DBA. Uh, we sorry. should have DBA. So that's what you want to talk about next. Okay, Rusty's got a question. Uh, when I was looking at the job posting, it does not have a rate. Uh, I asked the HR, Amy, and she said she was going to be trying to get a rate to, to add to the posting from the, the DDA. And that's what we need to talk about at the next meeting. Okay. And probably, and I don't know if we need to do that in executive session or not. I can't think so. It would be the same that we paid our last, um, Corey, our last administrative admin. So it would be the same. Um, I have no problem to talking about that open. It started out at 15, three months, it went to 17. Three months well, the problem with that sequence, though, is the applications close at 20 on the 20th of August, and we're supposed to conduct this, the interviews on the 7th. And I know that there are people asking what's the rate so that they may be applying. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have a comment about the rate. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, uh, Oh, maybe six, eight months ago, I was being uh, help twelve fifty nine. Now I, I'm paying uh, twenty dollars an hour just to find people. I think our rate needs to escalate up and, and join the, the the real world. And, and we're asking somebody a lot to show up for just few hours and we want to make it worth your while and I think that uh, an increase maybe 25 dollars an hour would be
be more appropriate. That's my thought. Yeah, start out at that or yeah. and then no right, just start out by 25 an hour. Is that what you're suggesting? What it is? Sure. I'll go with that. And now do you have I don't have a good handle on what would be the appropriate pay in Woodland Park at this moment in time. It is such the employment market is so volatile right now. Uh, so I don't really know. Uh, we may have to just rely on maybe the human resource department of the city to counsel us and see what we're doing. Uh, certainly want to be consistent, want to be able to attract good talent, mm -hmm. hopefully talent that has an expansive character to them also. Yeah. And the HR department does have tables, so they can like literally, it's the same one when we, we post city staff mm -hmm. um, rates. Now this is listed as an independent contractor um, for the admin position type of job description, but um, we could reach out to the HR for a recommended based on current uh, rate structures. Sure. Don't we need to do that right now? If you're saying. Well, we're not deciding on anything. We're having we, discussions. Yeah, we, so I can certainly follow through with HR. With HR. And yeah. Find out. So we will have that information yeah. at our September meeting. Um, well, but he's saying the posting ends this month. So it doesn't do us any good to have a September meeting. He's asking that we put something on now, I believe, right? Like soon, so in the next few we, days. Do we go with, with what? What is that rate? Is a, I told you, 15, three months. No, that was what you said. That's not what HR is, is, I'm sure. I know, but that's what we did before. Do we go with what we did before and then discuss this at our September meeting and decide to raise that? What, what what was it, uh, Mary Jo? It started out at 15 and three months 17 and three months 20. And that is historically what you, the, yes. the DDA has agreed to? That's what we paid Corey. That's what we've done in the past. So without having a board meeting and being right. able to vote on it, yeah. I, we can't just change it. I mean, we have to do it. Legal. So, hmm. comments down here, Arden, So, I, I want to be clear because I think, did you give us the project to collate the interview questions and get them run by HR? Yes. Do you want us to do an add on on getting HR recommendations on potential? pay rates yes. for this position? Yes, sure. that would work. Since you're going to be talking to them anyway, that's good. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to general discussion and the reports. Um, we'll start with Arden and then tell me who do you report. Arden, do you have any general discussion? I have none. Um, Okay, um, so I have a couple of areas to, so with, res, with, with regards to uh, the project that, that you gave John Gamelke and I with in getting the data kind of transitions, transition to the city, uh, the city did receive three thumb drives. Uh, drive one had 13.3 gig gigabytes, 839 folders, 6,410 files, uh, primarily of files, and uh, we're working to get that indexed. Uh, drive two was 7.26 gigabytes, 116 files, mainly meeting recordings. Drive three was 969 megabytes, nine files, mainly recordings. Um, and again, um, uh, getting that indexed uh, so that we have a, a good listing of what we have there. Um, we also did receive a core request in this last week, and basically it was for three items. Uh, one was the pre-trial briefs from both the plaintiff and uh, the defendant in the DDA trial, and then the DDA judgment itself. 
Um, we did not find those files on these thumb drives, so we were going to reach out to Mr. Coy to see if he could help us uh, get those gathered up uh, to meet the core request. So our initial response on the core request was we cannot find them. Uh, we then got had a follow on um, request that we reach out uh, to try to get those. So we'll get with Mr. Coy and see if we can't gather those. Those are all public documents um, at, with the court. Uh, but hopefully we can locate them without going to the court. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of bring up was kind of like a bullet point, a theme um, uh, for any board that I join, and I've been on a few, um, uh, a theme for me in, and in my world at the bank is internal controls and processes. And so it's what keeps us out of trouble. It keeps us from kind of overstepping our bounds as a board. And so I think some processes just um, observing uh, that we can clean up a little bit is a more formalized expense reimbursement process. And I think we can probably get some help from the city and mimic uh, maybe their processes. I uh, did have discussions with the city. Uh, they have offered um, to uh, provide us a city email for each of us for the DDA for a total of $400 a year, which I think is a good value. I think it would allow us to, to uh, turn off that easy uh, so that we're not dinging Mr. Coy's credit card. And uh, after last meeting, I was able to access the DDA email as of this last week. I can't anymore, I don't know why. Uh, I would argue that $400 a year for, uh, and it's in the Office 365 ecosystem, so there's a, uh, a lot of protections there from an IT security perspective. I think it's a good value and I think uh, we should put it on our agenda for next meeting to approve that expense and transition uh, because as Mr. Gamelki said, I will not use my personal or bank email for business, period. Uh, it's not appropriate. Um, also, um, um, I was pleased to see, we were pleased to see that uh, Looks like a lot of like pre-2016 DDA documents uh, when the city digitized, uh, it's in two places. One, it's in a physical uh, climate controlled environment, which is uh, pretty, the boxes are there somewhere, pretty expensive to access, uh, but it looks like the files were digitized. So when we get this index, we may have them going back to 2001, that's great. Um, the city is transitioning their uh, LaserFish online document repository system to a new system. And I would argue that as a subset of the city, we should put all of our documents into that same system. And what's nice about it is that we can hang off access off of a DDA page under the city of Woodland Park. And so any future open records requests they can actually go find those documents themselves, uh, except for ones that would be deemed restrictive because of uh, the requirement to keep them private. Uh, so um, also I would argue that we need to establish uh, an attorney communication process procedures. Uh, for instance, um, I believe that any questions to the attorneys and I do this in my own business, um, is that we draft the questions first and, get, and vet them first uh, for a couple of reasons. One, to make sure that we ask the question appropriately, because that's the key. When you're dealing with the attorney, you have to ask the question appropriately. Otherwise, uh, you can fall into the trap of guiding them to the answer you want. And, and if you've dealt with attorneys at all, uh, you understand what I'm talking about. So drafting you know, a process whereby we draft the questions. And then just like with our health issues, uh, if you have to go to the doctor to deal with a health issue, you should always take a second person because you never hear everything. And so um, I would suggest that not only do we document the questions prior to asking, but we also have at all times two DDA board members asking the question and listening to the answers interacting. Uh, again, two sets of ears are better than one. Um, and uh, those are the kind of four main areas that stood out for me in terms of us doing our business properly and professionally. And I think uh, we should consider um, 
formalizing all of those areas. And I think in discussing with John, he was willing to, uh, for us to work together as a project to come back with some recommendations to the board on how to accomplish all of those. Okay, we'll put that on the agenda as well. Okay. Well, I, I didn't I didn't have anything to start with, but based on what uh, Tony has just brought up, Val Carr was really adamant about, I mean, his number one pet um, project when the city council started with the new council was to get better rules and procedures. Now, the, the rules and procedures document that the city council came up with is a good guide, um, but I don't think everything on it would be appropriate. Would it be okay to uh, uh, make a copy of the current, it, it's an ordinance, uh, rules and procedures, and float it to all the members to take a look at which things we might want to incorporate and which ones we think are not appropriate as a start point, because I hate starting with a blank sheet of paper and I hate reinventing the wheel. So use that as a start document and then think about adding some language around the second point about the attorney communication process so we could come to a future meeting with some ideas of what we may want to plagiarize and what we may want to just say you know we want our own stuff is would that sure, be a, i have no objection to that any of the rest of the board you know everybody okay no and I'll do it in electronic form so that uh, it's easy for you to take a look at and just pull it up and you know mark up. Okay, that's all I have, Mary Jo. Okay. Okay, and I um, I have a couple of things, and I I briefly addressed this, and I thank you, Michael, for coming. Um. There was a grant received by the city for tourism and Michael is heading a committee. And if you would tell us about that, please, Michael. Yeah. Good morning, board. I'm Michael Austin, the city manager. Um, yeah, as Mary Jo stated, um, the city has received a grant from the Colorado Tourism Office called the Restart Destinations Grant. And what that is, um, is uh, we will have a professional facilitator who works in the tourism industry come here to Woodland Park and help us develop basically a tourism strategy document, a roadmap uh, for what the city would like itself uh, to be in terms of tourism in the future. Um, it, it has struck me since I arrived here late last year that um, there's a lot of different opinions on what tourism looks like in this city and what it should look like in the future. And so since that time, we've been thinking about how to put a finer point, um, come up with a united front on how we want to do tourism. And so this grant helps us do that with other people's money, which is great. Um, we have a number of different stakeholder groups in the community, including Main Street, um, Gail Gross and SOAR. Um, we have the U.S. Forest Service, who's going to be a part of it, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the city, of course, um, and we thought the DDA might um, kind of round out that list um, of groups to have as just that core um, stakeholder group. As the process moves forward, we'll bring in other folks from throughout the community um, for a community-wide workshop uh, in October. Um, but for right now, we're just trying to round out that core team to help us get to that community-wide workshop. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Mary Jo and Mr. Weatherford and I have also spoken uh, a little bit um, but uh, it seemed wise that it come back to the, the committee here uh, to figure out if DDA is interested and if so, who might be that representative. We asked that one person represent DDA if the board's interested. Michael, I have a question. Are, are you, since there is some chapters about tourism in the, the comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. are you tying the comprehensive plan effort with this new grant money effort? Yeah, so as part of um, kind of the needs assessment for that grant, they have pulled in a number of different documents. Um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what those all are, but we have submitted those, including uh, the draft comp plan document for that facilitator. And, it, and the planning commission is tied in with it, maybe a representative, just because they have to sign off on the comp plan. It, they may want to be a participant or at least listener, or at least offer it to them. 
Um, I, I might think that we uh, could bring in someone from uh, the planning commission for that larger um, community workshop group, oh, excuse me. Um, but we've, we are trying to keep that core group very small at this point per the request of the grantor. Um, so unless someone from the planning commission is an expert and represents one of those groups, I would be a little hesitant to do that. Um, but we, um, we will look for a way, I think, to make sure that um, whatever we come up with vets well against the comp plan and is consistent with it. And, and I'm more, you know, we've talked about the fragmentation, trying to bring it together. They may simply be there as a liaison or a, an ear to listen. I don't think they're going to have much to contribute other than to be a participant or at least offer them the opportunity to participate so they can choose to participate or not. Well, it's a good point, but well, um, yeah, we're running well, out of time. We need to talk about Arden. I suggested to sit on that board with Mike. I'm not sure if you had comments on that. Michael. What timeline are we working under? Because I thought now. this was until 10.30. 10.30? No, no. No, no. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> so, Michael, the board, this is a consensus. We can't vote on this. If it needs a vote, we'll have to take it to September. Consensus so they can get started. Are you willing to do it? I'm willing to do it, but it shouldn't have been a phone call. Me and you deciding I'm going to do it. No, I think we should be an item on the agenda for next. First, I want to ask you if you're willing. To. Yeah, I told you I'd pull my weight here, but we shouldn't just decide it. This right. is how things have been done in the past. We should put it on the agenda. So consensus so they can move on. We'll put it on the agenda. Is that all right to? Would anybody else like to volunteer to do that? And if I may, and I, I apologize for, for putting the, the board here in a perhaps a difficult spot, but um, there, there will be a series of meetings for this core group leading up to that October workshop. Um, and so that first one, I believe, will happen later this month. And I believe this board's next meeting is early September. Um, so I, I don't know, not, not pushing for an answer right now by any means, but um, if someone wanted to come in and just be a part of that meeting informally. And then if you wanted to kind of switch horses in the, in, in the middle, um, you could do that or um, however you want to do it, but we will probably have that first meeting if y'all want to attend somebody, um, or you can just catch up after um, when we meet again in September. I, so we can't vote on anything, but I, I would suggest that if we have a consensus, then uh, we can, send a representative to at least start the meetings and then formally ratify or approve in September. Yeah, that's about that. Yeah. So is that consensus that Arden can attend that first meeting and then we'll vote in September? Would he be the representative? That's the consensus. So we yeah. don't move forward and not hold it to that. Thank Great. you, Mike. Anything Thank you. else you'd like to say? Anything that we could <clears throat> say about the bike rally to help with? I understand that the defenders will be parking on Woodland Station, and that's about it. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure. You probably have better details on where the vendors will be parking than I do. I don't think we have anything else, but uh, whoever is listening, the bike rally uh, will start Friday um, in, the, in the afternoon and then carry through to Saturday evening. Um, but we appreciate DDA for being a willing partner, certainly, to help make that happen. We're very excited. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Okay, Rusty, you're done. Um, Jerry, go ahead. Any general discussion? Do you have anything? Um, yes. Uh, Colorado Revised Statute 31 25 819. Conflict of interest. No board member nor any employee of the board shall vote or otherwise participate in any manner in which he has a specific financial interest, defined as a matter in which the member or employee would receive a benefit or incur a cost substantially greater than the other property owners within the district. When such interest appears, it is the duty of the board member or employee to make such interest known and uh, henceforth, 
henceforth retrain, refrain from voting on an otherwise participating in a particular transaction involving such interest. Willful violation of the provisions of this section constitutes malfeasance on the part of a member of the board and is grounds for instant dismissal of any employee. The governing bodies made by ordinance provide for automatic forfeit forfeiture of office by a board member uh, for violation of this section. I am going to repeat it over and over again. There is a conflict of interest here, and I'm going to object. And I object to the city council putting this in this position. And Jerry, so you've I, read almost verbatim what is our conflict of interest sta statement. Okay, my take. Al Jennings Jr. might uh, share with the board. Uh, a few days back, the members of city council had a training session put on by the Colorado Municipal League on uh, boardsmanship, how to analyze information, uh, board decorum. Uh, I found that to be a very enlightening and refreshing thing for me, uh, even though I've been on boards for quite a few years get to thinking, you know, I know it's a, what it's all about. Well, they bring forward some new little nuances that are very, very important. CML also will do that for boards and commissions of the city. And we have that opportunity to participate in that. And I found it to be a, a very desirable thing and would recommend that maybe we look at a board training to learn about board decorum, uh, boardsmanship, so that we can become a more effective board. I'm sorry, the city didn't invite us all to that. Yeah, they did. Uh -huh. That's how I found out about it. It was mentioned here in one of our meetings. Yeah, yeah. I picked up on it. I thought I'm going to attend, and I found it uh, very, very desirable. You know, it's an hour program or thereabouts, and it was presented very, very well. And I would say it would perhaps help us. Yeah. yeah. And I suspect uh, Michael could help us, you know, put that together, uh, being that uh, the city is a member of CML, that they would be willing to come down. That's good. Does that, do you think that needs to go on the next agenda? If it doesn't go on the next agenda, I would like you to bring that up okay. at yeah. a future meeting, too. Yeah. So. Am I too far out in left field, Michael? I, I don't think so. Um, okay. I, I remember Mr. Mr. Bomber is the executive director for CML, and he, he made that offer. Um, we, we can certainly reach out to him even today and see what uh, what a timeline might look like. Sure, y'all yeah, can bring it back next meeting, but we'll we'll start to get the wheels rolling if you like. Okay. However, the board feels on yeah. that. Thank yeah. you. Okay. We'll put it on the agenda next time we discuss that. Yeah. So, there too. So, I mean, yeah. Well, just as this is a work session, I would say I think it's an excellent opportunity. So, I think uh, Michael's offered to find out a timeline. So, I think we we to put it on the agenda to formally approve it, but is there anyone against no. the concept of being trained a little better? Okay, thank you. If you would, Michael, that would be great. We can discuss okay. that at the next meeting, yeah. maybe approve the time and, and set that up. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would, would be you great. Mean, oh, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Good. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. John? Thank you, Al. Okay. Do I have any discussion? Well, in general, general you mean? Yeah. In general. So, and I don't, I should know the address, but I don't. Um, there's a, when I go through some of our responsibilities, to encourage where appropriate the renovation and reuse of vacant and deteriorated structures within the district. Mm -hmm. We have a building right across the corner from Arden's building mm -hmm. that's been sitting there for years that I've seen. How do we help this person? How do we 
try to make that it's it's right on a major corner it's right across from the dinosaur resource center it's right across arden's got a nice place uh he's got a nice i mean a lot of people have nice places right there that's like the eyesore on the corner what is our responsibility as a dda because it says here this is part of our responsibilities how can we try to help that situation and then on that the other thing is is it's uh landscaping um I know some of us have put a lot into fixing up the outsides of our buildings and make, making them friendly for people to walk by, even putting out picnic tables for people to use. And then there's others that aren't. If you drive through the alleys and the, and the back ways, you'll see weeds four or five foot tall, uh, discarded furniture, things like that. And there's a lot of people, there's more and more foot traffic in Woodland Park and they are using these ways to get through. And so, what is our responsibility? How do we address those things? We say that we're responsible to do them, but I don't see anybody doing any footwork or anybody shaking any hands or knocking any doors to make these things happen. So how do we make that happen? But we're so far, we sit here and we make some ideas and come up with some plans, but we're not doing, there's no footwork. There's no, there's no legwork involved. So what do we do as a board direct me? I'm kind of a, a type personality i want to go out and do and try to make things happen um so what do we do with that suggestions or is this the building that used to be a restaurant that some sort of a kitchen type thing jerry's job <laughs> yeah, it's owned by it's got to be his name is Ace. do you know who owns it do you know anything well, about it honestly uh, i think there's uh sally or sally are you familiar with the jerry junk jerry's junk building um, I think there was somebody trying to renovate it and there's some stumbling blocks what they are exactly I don't know but I, I think Sally might have some so insight into is it. Is there something we can do though to make it when we renovated our building it didn't look like that during renovation. Is there something we can do to the exterior to make it a little bit during the process? I, I, and I'm not pointing anything I'm just saying it is it is kind of a big eyesore right there on the main corner. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Any comments, Alan? This is really a private property situation and I'd rather not comment because the owner is in uh, legal issues with a contractor. Okay. So it's none of our business. Yeah. <laughs> so as it so okay so really we say we want to do these things and it's in our it's in our objectives and purposes but we don't really want to do these things well we're limited somewhat i mean we can't dictate that goes back on i'm asking but yeah. what to help is correct it, it says that where we can where we can help is there anything that we can do to help as a as a board here because that's part of what it says we have some finances, we have some resources. Can we help? I, I, you know, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, so the city does have uh, Keep Woodland Park Beautiful, and I think they do a great job. And I know some current board members and previous board members participated in a very um, meaningful way in those processes. So I, I would encourage you to explore Keep Woodland Park Beautiful. Okay. So, Mary Jo, do, does the DDA actually submit their own budget to the city or did the yes. city? We make our budget, then we submit it to the city for approval. So wouldn't it be taking John's uh, question, the, the DDA board members would simply want to add some sort of a assistance line item for funding? Is that well, how that we, would work? We do have some of that budgeted, but we are having a hard time spending it. We seem to get some criticisms for it. So we're being very careful in how we spend it. So, okay. Bob, you got anything to uh, Yeah, on? I have a few questions. Yes. Is that appropriate? Yeah, go okay. ahead. I uh, this is a question for all the uh, three new members and uh, the same question for each. Uh, what do you hope to achieve as a board member? You know, you can start with. I just want to get something done with Woodland Station. Woodland Station. Okay. Tony? 
Uh, I'll try to be succinct. Um, so um, I think why I'm here is to help um, meet the mission of the DDA, which I think right now is not necessarily just within the station. I think it's uh, managing the DDA properly. I think it's repaying the debt. I think it's setting up the conditions for Woodland Station to be solved. And when appropriate, uh, I believe we're gonna have a TIF application here in September to uh, openly and meaningfully um, take that application seriously and assess its benefit to the district and to the city of Woodland Park. So just overall uh, hoping to help be an adult on the dais to improve the DDA function. Well, as a small business owner, I wanna help other small business. I also wanna see us grow, but I wanna see us grow in a healthy way. Um, I come in as somewhat of an outsider. So I'm a little bit clean from all the, the, the gossip and, and, and all the things that have gone on in the past. I'm trying to come in with a clean, open head. Um, I don't write anybody's shirt tails. Um, I think on my own and make decisions on my own. And I'm just trying to gather the information to find out what's best for the city of Woodland Park and what's best for the business. Because we are responsible for the businesses within the DDA. Um, and I think that's our primary goal is to make that as healthy as possible. Um, I, think, I think we've got a good chance at maybe doing some creative things, getting something more positive going on. I'm not saying that some positive things haven't happened in the past. I'm still learning what those are. So I'm still learning how to best help. Uh, I do have a follow-up question on, uh, since Tony and uh, Arden mentioned Woodland Station, how would you go about solving the Woodland Park Station problem? I'll go first. Um, I've made clear my perspective. We create a document electronic or otherwise that has the good, the bad, the ugly, and we wait for the free market period. We don't try to pretend to develop um, other than possibly doing a boundary survey to define the actual property left and the legal description so that if a buyer comes, we're prepared to actually enter into contract. That's it. I have no magic pill. Yeah, very similar to that. It needs to be packaged as a real opportunity for somebody to do something here, not a mouse trap. Not a mouse trap. Not a mouse trap to get caught. <laughs> okay, uh, I know the follow up on that. Who is go is going to be footing the bill for all the infrastructure improvements that need to be done on the station before it's developed? Well, again, we're going to vote on it as a board, but I'm suggesting we don't spend any money except for potentially a boundary survey. We shouldn't be doing any infrastructure. We shouldn't be guessing at what that infrastructure should be or what that use might be or what lots should be divided how. I think we wait, period. I mean, it's very simple. Is there uh, any update on the Williams project? Are they dropping out or what's going on with those guys? We don't know. They're still, there's, you know, we don't know. And they, I don't guess, know either. There's a new developer supposedly has joined Michael, but we've seen nothing. They haven't contacted the city. We haven't presented anything. So at this time, it's on hold. They were scheduled to come to the last meeting, but they did not come. No. They didn't show up? No. Okay. Anything else? Uh, can I make a personal? Sure. As a Workshop. citizen of Park. This uh, Women's Station for Things has been going on for over 20 years now. It's a white house on the TDA. Uh, the costs of the, of the debt that you owe the city because of this project development problems with the infrastructure and, and the uh, benzene plume are a monkey on everybody's back. And Tony's absolutely right. Nobody's going to go in there with such a small parcel and try to recoup uh, a refund on their investment or return on their investment 
when there's so many problems with that property. So it would be my suggestion to just give it back to the city and let them work for it about it. <laughs> and then deal with the debt that you owe the city. That may have, now our debt will be paid off in 26 and 28. 26, I believe the city is 28 is Spectra. And our debt will be paid off and we end in 32. So our debt is moving forward and we have brought it down substantially. So we're paying our debt fine. And we just we just need to decide Woodland Station. We've had great projects everywhere else, all over town. But Woodland Station is our albatross. And we just we need to figure out what to do with it. And we can't just really dump it on the city. That's not that's not what this is all about. We're trying not to do that. Hannah, do you have anything? I do have just a few things. Uh-huh. Regarding the debt to the city, just a reminder that began as a $1 million loan in 2007. In 2017, it was a million one four seven. Thank you, Sally. Is that better? that uh, the, a previous board negotiated a payment plan to repay that debt. This is a debt everybody's talked about in this community for a long time. It's, it's a black eye on the DDA, and we took uh, significant measures to ensure that this DDA could repay it. And today, the principal outstanding is 665000 the first payment being in 2017. So that's pretty significant, if you ask me. That's great success in reducing that debt. And if you just stay the course at a minimum, it'll be paid off completely in five years. The, uh, I think Mr. Melke, John, asked a great question about that building that sits at the other end of the block my building sits on. Boy, would I love to see something happen there. Uh, the answer to your question, what can the DDA do? Is you have TIF financing you can incentivize projects. It's really a financial tool. That's really what the DDA is. You can't tell them what, what they need to do. You can, you can make suggestions and, and all of that. You can knock on the door and you can shake their hand, but really it boils down to the money. And you can offer the money. Hmm. Now we wade into a philosophical question of whether DDA should be used for such things or not. And what's your political philosophy? And I hear, a, a council liaison on the board say, maybe you should have a line item in your budget for such things. Well, that's very appropriate. Mm -hmm. Then I hear another board member say, you should look to keep Woodland Park beautiful for that, deflecting away from using the DDA. And I think that reflects different approaches to this organization and how it should be used. That's a philosophical design. And you guys need to wrap your heads around, you know, figure out how you want to use the organization. It's not just that property. There are several others in the yeah. town that, that where there are some really key opportunities. If you want to engage, you know, the DDA could make some meaningful uh, difference in what other projects get done. I'm curious what TIF proposal or application is coming in September. I can't wait to see what that is and how you approach it. Mr. Weatherford, thank you very much for being willing to serve as a volunteer and engage here and on this tourism board. Um, personally, I think it's very healthy. I'm excited to see it. I know you're a smart and capable man, and I think your contributions will be valuable. Thank you. The documents that were asked by, I heard my name brought up. I have been asked by Mr. Neal for those three documents you mentioned. My answers are in email and public record. I did submit them to the DDA. If anybody wants my help with those, you can see Mr. Neal or ask me and I'll give you the same answer I gave him. Uh, I'd like to respond to they that. They are. I'd like to enter, let me respond to that, please. Two of the three are there. Two of the three are there. I've located them, the pre-trial brief 
and the, the plaintiff's pretrial brief and the defendant's pretrial brief appear to be there, both of them, the judge's findings do not appear to be on the disc. Okay, I submitted all of the records that I have regarding all of that. If you cannot find them, well, keep looking. You have access to them. They are open public records. They are out there. There are numerous avenues for you to get them. Going to court to get them is absurd. So think on it, you can figure it out. And if you want my help, my offer to you stands. That's it for me, thank you. Sally, do you have anything? No, ma'am. Lynn, do you have anything? Mm -hmm. Michael? And Rebecca just left. I'm sorry about that. And she uh, wanted to extend her apologies. She needed to get to an appointment. Got you. Okay, well, um, the only thing that we didn't probably get to talk about is ideas for the DEA district other than a little education. And we've just run out of time to address that issue. I'd like to put that on one of our other meetings in the future. We talked a little bit about it with the bosses, with Joe Gilbert, but there's more to talk about. We we'll address that in another, another meeting. Um, I guess all we need now is a motion to adjourn. Can I extend just a few sure. more minutes? Because um, I was just uh, thinking about Mr. Volpe's questions to the three new board members. Um, is it appropriate to ask uh, the members who have been on for a while uh, their perception of why they're serving and what they would like to see moving forward? Sure. I would love to hear that since we're like in a work that. session. I have no that. Al, do you want to start? I get to be first out of the shoot. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I've often been asked, why do you still subject yourself to all of the things that go on on the DDA board? Yes, I was there in the beginning. There's a lot of protect, uh, projects that the DDA board has done very successfully and maintained, and it certainly has added substantially to the business community. Going forward, there's certainly a lot of other projects that can be done. Yes, um, that particular property that we were talking about earlier, is there something that we can do? Yes, John, there are things that we can do. Uh, if we're willing to do stuff and maybe reach forward and help that to occur. For me, the TIF is really public money to be utilized for the public good within the confines of the downtown district that has been defined as the DDA district. In the past, there's been times that we have used that maybe in not as desirable a manner in which we probably should. But my philosophy is the, as example, the hole that was associated with the country in, that was solved by that particular property owner. That's a good utilization of funds. I don't like to use TIF funds to improve only the bottom line of a business from a competitive standpoint. The improvement that went in and associated with Dan Taylor and the human being and the car wash, they solved a major issue. That corner was really a dead issue. He did a lot of good work, improved the visual aspects of that particular lot. That's a good utilization of funds. But to give TIF funds to a firm just to improve a bottom line, or they need the TIF funds in order to be 
successful in the community is not a good use. For years, I've been a resident of the city, well, first the town of Woodland Park, then the city of Woodland Park. And my goal has always been, you know, what can we do to improve our community? Uh, there's been a lot of good projects along the way. The DDA has some additional ways in which we can help to improve our community. And I want to do that. Uh, even on Woodland Station, yes, it is a albatross as some people like to call it, but I think there's some opportunities there too. But it's not just limited to the confines of that particular piece of property. You need to include what is going on adjacent to it and how you can improve those properties simultaneously benefiting Woodland Station and benefiting the city of Woodland Park. It's not an isolated item. I guess I find these arguments about conflicts of interest because their property is adjacent to it uh, is a pretty hollow argument. And it's certainly not going to serve the benefits of our community totally. And I'm interested in the totality of our community. And that community is, for the most part, because of my position on this board, is the DDA district. But collateral to that, it'll benefit people outside the district too and benefit our residents. So you can't look at this myoptically. You've got to look at what is the big picture also and not lose that. Does that yeah, big picture. give what you like? It's the big picture. Yeah, big picture. Mm -hmm. And we must not lose the fact that someday there may be an alternate route in and around Woodland Park. I have, let's say, enjoyed or listened to arguments about a bypass starting, I think, the first year that I moved to Woodland Park. That was 1968. They've been wanting, some people want it, some people don't. And it's been the last 50 some odd years, an issue that has been discussed one way or another. Will it happen in the future? Most likely there'll be some kind of an alternate route, unless we go back to horses, then we won't have to worry about it. Thank you, John. <laughs> um, Al, Al took up my time, so okay. I'll throw it. Um, you wish. <laughs> Um, uh, the reason I uh, uh, signed on with the board was um, for civic duty, uh, basically. I, I love Woodland Park. I would like to see it uh, be uh, even better. Um, and I, I came onto the board with no baggage, no, no special interest, and I had, I had, as a business person, had a kind of a deep dislike for the, the board uh, initially, and I wanted to I wanted to help right the ship in my estimation. Um, you know, when I was a hockey coach, I'm sitting there screaming at the referees. Uh, one game, and the one referee comes over and he says, well, if you think you can do it better, do it. So I did. I, I became a, a, an official. And that's kind of the, the approach I've taken to this. Uh, I want the citizens of Woodland Park to uh, enrich them uh, 
the best we can. So our decisions are, should be made for the entirety of the community, not just for individual few. I do not believe this should be a pulpit to um, benefit personally from. Um, the, let's see, the Woodland Station. Uh, I personally would like to see Woodland Station uh, be more beneficial to the community. I would like to see, uh, personally, I'd like to see like a rec center or a bowling alley or something, something that benefits the, the locals, not just people uh, from outside of town, uh, not just tourists. Um, I think that's much needed in this town. And I think this is a good, good opportunity, a good place for that. So while I'm not only supporting that kind of stuff, whatever is right is right, I'll go for. But I, I think there's a, a need and it would be a nice thing to have is more community oriented uh, services. Okay. Okay. Oh, you know, this is my home. I grew up here. You know, I, I don't want to lose everything that was good here as it grows, but I'm not against growth. And I, you can't stop growth, but you can definitely influence the quality of it. And I guess I'm here to uh, represent the people, the citizens, as well as the businesses in this town. Uh, I just, I think it's important to protect some of our history because that's who we are. So many people have come to town, well, what is Woodland Park? Well, we lost what Woodland Park was and I, I would like to be here to create some semblance of what we had that really worked. And like I said, represent the business people as well as the citizens of Woodland Park to make our town better. And I agree with those, so I don't need to reiterate that. Oh, that answer? Questions? And I would like to say one thing. We have had that Woodland Station has been um, addressed by so many issues. It was, it was purchased and given to the community of Woodland Park. And it was used for the people of Woodland Park. At one time, it was the heartbeat of Little Park. Everything happened there. It was the voting center. It was the classroom for the fourth grade for a whole year. It's where they played football. It's where they they bought the first uniforms for the band. The band marched there. Uh, it served the community. And I really think for anything to be a success there, it's going to have to serve the community and not an individual to be successful. I, I think that's the history of it. And that's just my personal feeling towards the problem. Okay. Does that answer your questions? Any comments? If not, do I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Al seconded. There we motion go. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? Network, sure. I want to put a little Thank more flesh on coming. what I think could happen in Woodland Station. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>